Welcome back to the Sailrite Workbench. Today, we want to show you a fun, simple leather craft project. We're going to show you how to make your own dice bag. This project is great for beginner leather crafters wanting to practice their skills. Although we are showing this project as a dice bag, you could also use it for a variety of other purposes as well. To start off, we'll be using two types of leather for this project chrome tan and vegetable tan. For the sides of the pouch, we have a nice four to five ounce chrome tan. For the center strip, we have three to four ounce veg tan. We went with the chrome tan because of the flexibility and texture, and the veg tan because of its smoother finish to help us achieve a more unique, multi-dimensional design. We sell these in panels of each so you can choose the size that works best for you. Here are all the tools we'll be using for this project. We've listed all of them in the description below so that you can follow along with us. We'll be sewing on the Sailrite Leatherwork sewing machine with a smooth foot set and Tex90 thread. Our first step is printing and cutting the pattern out. Don't worry, there's no wrong or right side, so either side of the pattern can be up or down. The one marked bottom panel will be our vegetable tan leather, and the one marked side panel will be our chrome tan. We will mark our pattern on the veg tan with a scratch all, but since chrome tan does not mark well, we'll be using a pen to mark on that. Next, use your pattern to mark on your side panel with the scratch all where the holes for our tie will go. Next, we will cut out our leather pieces with our flat head leather knife. Lastly, we need to cut a piece that will be the tie for our bag. For this, we cut a strip of veg tan leather about 3 16 inch wide and about 18 inches long with our leather strap cutter. Now we will place some cardboard down to protect our work surface when we dye our leather. Before dyeing our leather, we are going to use Neat's Foot Oil to soften and condition the veg tan up a little, which will make it easier to work with. To do this, we actually found a great way to get an even spread of oils and dye while covering more area than the wool daubers. We're going to use small blocks of foam. Put some oil on the foam block and thoroughly cover the veg tan piece. We are also going to apply the oil to our thin strip, which will be the tie for the bag. You can also dye the strip if you want to, but for our project, the oil made the veg tan strip dark enough to match the bag, so we will leave it as is. However, this choice is totally up to you. Once the leather piece is dry, we can apply our dye. So even though this looks like it might be a little bit wet, it's dry to the touch, and this discoloration isn't gonna matter because we're actually gonna dye it black anyways, so it's not that big of a deal. Now we're gonna show you how we dyed our leather. It's gonna be a similar process to how we added oil to the leather. You're gonna take a block of foam, you're gonna apply some dye to it, and you're going to apply it evenly to both sides of the leather. Finally, after our dye is dried, we'll add a resiline finish to help protect the colors and to prevent dye rubbing off. Apply a small amount of this using a foam block and a sweeping motion like so. We are only going to add resiline to our veg tan piece and not the chrome tan. Once the pieces are completely dry, we're going to cut out the holes on the side panels for the grommets. Place your leather on a cutting block and use a maul with a quarter inch hole punch to create the holes. Repeat this step for each panel. Next, we are going to start assembling the bag. Grab the bottom panel and one of the side panels and bring it over to the sewing machine. Line up the top square edge of the side panel with the bottom edge of the long panel with the finished sides facing in. The bottom edge of the long panel is the edge that is wider than the opposite edge. Place the needle down in the material and give yourself a quarter inch for seam allowance. We've gone ahead and set our stitch length to three millimeters. Then lower the presser feet and begin slowly sewing along the edge, making sure to pull the chrome tan along the edge of the veg tan. The chrome tan is more flexible than the veg tan, so this should be relatively easy. 
try to keep the edge of the panel and leather strip in line with the inside presser foot. Then once you have sewn that side panel in place, do the same with the other panel, being careful to go slow as the shape begins to pull the material. You might have some struggle through this tougher shape, but take your time and ease into the material, being sure to keep the spacing even and maintain your seam allowance. Once you have sewn those two panels to the main strip, you can cut your thread and use the thread burner to seal the thread ends. Or if you don't have a thread burner, you can use a lighter to seal the thread. Just be careful to not burn your material. Now, turn your assembly right side out and you should have a nice little pouch shape. Next, we'll be adding eyelets to our pouch to add some more detail. Again, this part is optional and not required. We just think it puts more detail into the pouch and makes it look a little nicer. To do this, we used our number zero plain grommets. Finally, to tie it all up, take your 3 16 inch leather strip and begin weaving it in and out of the holes you punched in the side panels. You can stamp a word like your name, your initials, or design into the veg tan. Note though, this should really only be done on the veg tan as the chrome tan doesn't stamp well. Again, we've listed all the tools down in the description below. To see more leather crafting projects and more leather DIY inspiration, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys next time.